Well, hello there, world. Welcome back to Golf Subpar with Colt Nost and Drew Stoltz. The Butterfield Bermuda Championship. What a week it was for Camilo Vajegas. So he's coming off a runner-up finish down in Cabo to kind of resurrect his career, give himself a chance to get in the top 125 in the FedEx, FedEx Fall points list to keep his card. And boy, did he ever ride the hot hand into, into Bermuda. Goes down there, follows up a little 25 under par performance with a 24 under par performance and a two-shot win over Alex Noren. He's now exempt for two years. He's in the players. He's got his card wrapped up. He's in the Masters, the PGA Championship. Unbelievable two weeks for Camilo Vajegas. And just another great story on the PGA Tour. Things changed quickly. It wasn't uh, too long ago we were talking to him. He was making his debut in the booth uh, with Steve Sands. That was kind of like a potential succession plan. But he's like, look, I'm not ready to be done playing yet. Played 11 events on the PGA Tour this year. Missed seven cuts. Played a bunch of Corn Ferry Tour events. Didn't have a ton of success there. And then all of a sudden, I mean, dude, he was signed up for second stage of Q School. Mm -hmm. Going, he was, ready to get, he was ready to get going on that. And then, boom, he has the week in Cabo. Hell of a story with Eric Van Royen, Camilo being runner-up. And then to parlay that into this week how about just a little 49 under your last two weeks things are going good and we talked to him before the week too and he's like i love this kind of golf windy grainy you know that tropical stuff and damn he looked good out there and i mean it's it's unbelievable how quickly things can change on the pj tour from going to q school to having a two-year exemption being in major championships and things like that and just the two stories we've gotten on the pj tour the last two weeks i know the fall series aren't the biggest events but with what Eric Van Royen was going through for his win, and then Camilo, his story is pretty well documented with his daughter losing her to cancer. Man, like it's there's some cool storylines coming out of this fall series. Yeah, there is. You're exactly right. Eric Van Royen with his best friend John Trasmore, um, who doesn't have much time left with us, suffering from melanoma, and like you said, Mia's miracles. Camilo Vajegas, we've had him on the show. It was great, um, but just what a comeback! First win in nine years, over three thousand days. Just insane for him to come back when it looked like his career could possibly be over. Now he's heading to Kapalua and all the yeah. perks that come with winning. Really, really cool. Go ahead we got WD out of that yeah. uh, second stage. Yeah, you, That's you nice. There's your, one less guy you got to beat wherever Camilo was going. You can get your check back for that. And then one other awesome story yes. in the game of golf. Max Homa going down to South Africa to basically play Africa's major. The Ned Bank Challenge down there. And he's got our good buddy, Ben Marsh. Smarsh, Smarsh as we call him. Real estate agent here in Scottsdale. His normal caddy, Joe Griner, didn't really feel like making the trip down there. So Max calls in Marsh. They go down there. Marsh never caddied in a professional tournament. Leads his man to a four-shot victory. This caddying thing's easy, boys. Is Griner on the hot seat? <laughs> People are talking in the world of golf. One for one and a major. A major, by the way. Africa's major. Never lost the tournament. Ben Marsh, one of our... Closest buzz. Great dude. Great golfer. Played at the University of Arizona, but filling in for one week. Uh, pretty sweet story for him. Nice little payday for the kid, by the way. Got to see a part of the world that he probably may never see before. Max goes down there, goes on the safari with uh, his wife and Justin Thomas and all that and have a great time before and then shows up and just basically run, ran away with that thing. It was a hell of a week. We might have to get smarsh in here whether it's a full length or just like a little bonus ball interview like just walk us through the week and stuff because we were talking to him before he's a little nervous never been in that Hell scenario yeah. before and then all of a sudden bam you're in the winner's circle the celebration for max i don't know if you saw it with like i don't know if they were volunteers or they're working the event but the singing the chanting coming over to him in a pack putting him on his shoulders it was, it was a hell of a production down there pretty sweet shout out max it just keeps getting better for him mike Car commodore coined him the, the king of africa yeah, that's he, what they're calling him. man. Um, really cool to see, though. It was awesome to go down there. Justin Thomas played very well, um, but Max was the man of the hour. And Ben Marsh, just undefeated in his caddying career. Might want to keep it that way. I think we got to get him in here just for a little a little small one, just to see what it's like yeah. to be what some people are calling the most successful caddy in the history of golf. Listen, you can only win when you put yourself in the ring, and he's undefeated. Tiger Woods. Joe LaCava's caddying for Patrick Cantley. Maybe give our boy Smarsh a call. I'm just saying, there's a buzz around the world of golf right now. What's it going to take to peel Marsh out of real estate, get on the bag? One event, one bag, one win, and a major, Well, nonetheless. It's the start to another beautiful week, and why not start it off right with a little bit of our favorite tequila, Ooh. Sincoro, Slee. Sincoro tequila, the best in the business. It's easy to drink on the course or in the clubhouse, whatever you want. And each week, we're doing a little special drink if you're – Watching instead of listening, you can see right here we have a beautiful Sincoro Reposado with with some orange, fresh squeezed orange, a little soda, and then an orange garnish. This is exactly how I drink it. 
This is exactly this is what you do. Right this here. is the this is the gravy special. Let me do a little taste test while you keep going. We got to do a little cheers first, bud. This is called the Sincoro Club. Here's to you. As smooth as it Here's gets, and I'm telling you guys right Ooh. now, if as a tequila connoisseur, you throw the orange on there, it just makes it that much better. Yeah, this is a smooth, this is a dignified drink right here. This is a classy drink. You could drink it on the golf course, make some tweets, post game, have a couple. You know what I mean? Talk it out with the fellas. This is this is the real deal, Holyfield. It's the greatest tasting tequila because it is rich and delicious and has a long, luxurious finish. Sincoro is incredibly smooth and achieves the delicate balance between the sweetness and complexity of agave. If you're interested in learning more about Sincoro, insight on the brand and its founders, by the way, Michael Jordan, Jeannie Buss, among other people involved in the NBA. You can follow them on Instagram at at Sincoro. That's C-I-N-C-O-R-O. If you'd like to give Sincoro a try for your next time out on the course, you can go to Sincoro.com or your local spirit distributor to buy a bottle and give it a try. It will not disappoint. It is fantastic. Long and luxurious. I Model love. around our golf games. Yes, I, exactly. You know what I mean? Two adjectives to use to describe both of our games. Nothing like a little tequila to get your week going. Mm absolutely what better way to start it love it well we got a very special guest this week but before we get to that yes you know we're drinking the good stuff we're wearing the good stuff polo ralph lauren looking fantastic as always my man looking good and feeling good what else is there the rlx golf collection draws inspiration from the traditional aesthetic of polo updating it to create a modern sensibility focused on performance driven design from sophisticated styles to the most technologically advanced fabrics available, RLX Golf is the ultimate in functional luxury and provides pieces that are ready for whatever the conditions bring, on the course or off. Ralph Lauren is the official outfitter of the United States Ryder Cup team and partner of the AJGA. Ralph Lauren is proud to continue its sponsorship of golf ambassadors Andrea Lee, Billy Horschel, Davis Love III, Devin Bling, Doc Redman, Jonathan Bird, Nick Watney, Sean Foley, Smiley Kaufman, Todd Anderson, Tom Watson, Trevor Werblow, Troy Taylor III, Tyler Strafacci, and Zach Johnson. The RLX Golf Collection is available in select Ralph Lauren stores, exclusive private clubs and resorts, and online at ralphlauren.com. You and I got out on the course this week. Starting to get a little brisk here in Scottsdale at well, night. The cash measy is in full effect. It is beautiful here in Scottsdale right now. So I, I love the polos they got rocking. When it does cool down, the cashmere hoodie, my man. Nothing better. Once you wear it, you don't yeah. want to wear anything else. It's it's the warmest thing possible on the golf course and not bulky. You don't need like four layers. It's They're the best. The best pieces there are. Make sure you go to ralphlauren.com and pick some of that up. All right, our guest this week. This is going to be, if you haven't heard of him, just wait. Because he's going to make a splash on the PGA Tour. And I think he is going to become quite possibly one of the fan favorites out there. This man is just, he's just beautiful. I love him. Young up-and-comer out of Texas A&M. He's going to be a rookie on the PGA Tour in 2024. His name's Chandler Phillips, but after you got to check him out on YouTube because after you see this, there's only one name for him, and it's Doc. He's going to be a tough dude not to root for on the PGA Tour. Does things his own way, as you'll hear, in terms of preparation, practice, all the stuff. He's not into all the bells and whistles and all the shit going on on the PGA Tour, but hard to argue with it. He was a monster at Texas A&M, came out and quickly – Got his PJ Tour card. Uh, he's going to be fun to watch this year. He is. And speaking of bells and whistles, the fancy ones, make sure you go to our YouTube page, like, subscribe, and also fairwayjockey.com. Pick you up some Birdie Juice merch, whether it's hats, T-shirts, hoodies, whatever you want. We got it. All right, here's Chandler Phillips, a.k.a. Doc, on Subpar. All right, folks, it is time to meet your new favorite rookie on the PGA Tour. He was a three-time All-American at Texas A&M. He is as cool as they come. The only thing he enjoys more than making birds is hunting them. Ladies and gentlemen, Chandler Phillips. How we doing, Chandler? Good, good. How are y'all? Good, AKA man. Doc. I feel like your voice got a little extra country when you started talking to Ch about Chandler. Extra country? Yeah. You, you think a I got a little in there? Well, Arkansas coming out of me a little bit. Oh, okay. You know? <laughs> You're normally from Colorado, but now that we're talking to a country boy. I was born boy, in Arkansas. You know the whole deal, I too. like it. You know it. Well, Chandler, thanks for joining us, my man. Congrats on earning your PGA Tour card for 2024. I know you got to be excited to get things going. Yeah, absolutely. Um, January can't get here fast enough. Yeah, but it's hunting season for you. That is a fact. Those golf clubs are in the closet right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, real quick before we get going, because people, I mean, I don't know if people know this, but you are a diehard hunter. You're just an outdoorsman. And I've heard right. from several people in between like semesters at Texas A&M, between the last fall tournament and the first tournament in the spring, 
You didn't touch the clubs too often. No, never. And my my old head coach, uh, JT Higgins, he'd get on me pretty good. <laughs> but I'm just like, hey, man, like <laughs> – I'll, I'll be fine. Just, just let me, let me have some fun. Like we're going day in, day out. Like I just got to have a, that it's, it's my like off time and like reset, you know, and uh, I've kind of always done it and it seems to somewhat work for me. And uh, I don't, I don't plan on changing it anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. oh, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix yeah. it. And didn't you do this last year before the corn parade too? Like, I think it's like November, December. Like, you don't t touch a club, maybe even January. And then you went out and won the first event on corn parade tour. Yeah, so yeah. Works. I so I had to go back to Q school last year, and uh, this last year was actually my first full year on corn ferry. And um, final stage always got me. I had actually made it to final stage every year that I went to Q school, but put too much pressure on myself and could never, uh, you know, get the status that I needed. And this last year, went to Q school again, played well, finished 10th in uh, finals. And um, that ended the first week of no November. And um, as soon as I got home, put the clubs in the closet. First term of the corn ferry season was the second week of January. I, uh, I think I picked up the clubs, my first club, since uh final stage of q school january 2nd or 3rd and pretty much practiced a week and went out there and had some fun god bless you I mean, that'd that's, be so nice that is beautiful i mean is this gonna be the same game plan heading into sony open in, in hawaii on the pga tour it probably sounds bad but yeah yeah no i'm i got a good group of guys that i go hunting with every year um we uh we usually leave uh, probably Wednesday or Thursday of every week and come back on Mondays and just it's every week we're we're rolling. And uh, that's what I plan on doing. Opening season, and duck season this weekend. So we know where I'm you'll leaving. be. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, it's like I say, it's a reset and I'm, I'm not somebody that um, I guess sets a lot of goals. I just kind of, go with the flow and because I feel like when I give myself um, a lot of expectations that I want to meet and I don't meet them, I kind of, it's just kind of gets in my head and I just, I don't want to even put myself in that position. So I just kind of, whatever happens, happens. And um, it's, you know, somewhat been working for me. So yeah, I, yeah, no I, say. I agree with you. I want to go back to Texas A&M because you go there. I mean, you grew up in Huntsville. Texas A&M is just an hour down the road, I believe. And you go there, and I mean, you, you break pretty much every record Texas A&M has. You have the most wins, lowest scoring average, all that. Three-time All-American, I mean, three times on the Palmer Cup. By the way, the only other American to do that was a guest on this show, Bryce Mulder from Georgia Tech. I know you're in your basically third year as a professional. Are you a little surprised like you didn't have more early success as a pro considering all the success you had at Texas A&M? No. Because when I did come out, I was kind of expecting it. Mm -hmm. um, because it, it, it was is more the reason of like who I graduated with or like who turned pro at the same year. The same year I did. You know, what I mean, we're talking about Matt Wolf, Colin Morikawa, Victor Hovland. Um, Justin Suh uh, was on there. Justin Suh, uh, yeah, Justin Suh, uh, Davis Riley. Um, oh, I, I mean, tough just class. go down. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just go down the list, and I mean, everybody was kind of. And then the year before me, you know, Will's out Torres, um, Scotty, everybody was just kind of like right out of the gate doing great things, and I was like, oh, well, I'm gonna do that. You know, I I I feel confident I can do that, and I just. I had it in my head that I was going to do it. And I think I just put too much pressure on myself. And when I do that, put too much pressure on myself, <laughs> that don't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't take you too long, dude. Yeah. You got out there pretty quick. You, know, you hadn't been spending a decade down on the jickies. But as a guy who also had terrible conditional status on the Corn Ferry Tour, 
Is that not almost, I think that can be almost worse than not having any status at all because you almost feel obligated to chase all those Mondays and do all those things. And sometimes you're only playing one day a week because you miss and then you got to wait for the next one. What did you do during those two years when you weren't getting those starts? Yeah, I played I played uh, the the old Adams Tour. It's called the All Pro Tour. Um, it's called the All Pro Tour now. But I played those and the first – two years um you know i play a lot of mondays and then last year i didn't play any i didn't play any mondays and i had you know conditional status i was like because i never got through one and i i hate playing qualifiers where it's like okay before you even tee it up you know you gotta go shoot eight under or you ain't got a chance you know it it's a joke and uh i told myself i was like I'll just play the mini tour, you know. I mean, you can you can make a good living on the mini tour if you play well, and I I did last year. You know, I I'm driving to every event, you know, staying in a hotel with a buddy, and you don't have to have a caddy. Expenses aren't too bad, and I mean, I I ended up making like almost eighty grand last year on the mini tours, and I didn't even win. So, I mean. I didn't want to spend all my money flying to these Mondays, playing one day, you know, everything like that and kind of waste away money. Obviously, it could have went a different way, but I guess we'll never know. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, look at that. You, you saved a lot of money. You drove around playing the Jicky Jacks, as Sleaze likes to mm -hmm. call them. And now you're heading yeah. to the PGA Tour where the average purse is going to be about $17 million. So yeah. uh, things are about to change for you, my friend. It's a good time yeah. to be on the PGA Tour. Absolutely. All right, some big news here from Subpar. We have officially launched our own YouTube page. Make sure to subscribe at golf underscore subpar on YouTube. Check out this week's video. Uh, like, subscribe, do all the stuff. Colt, we got some cool behind-the-scenes stuff coming and uh, give you a little outside look at some of the stuff outside the studio. So please like, please subscribe. You're the best listeners in the game. We love you. Back to the show. Is there an event you got? I mean, obviously looking at your schedule and everything, you don't know where exactly you're going to get in every, every single week. Is there an event though? Yeah. Kind of have circled. Like I can't wait to get there and play that one. Um, honestly, the first one, I mean, I, I, I know, I know I've said that like, I'm not, not going to practice much during this off season, but like this last year, or this last season on the Corn Ferry, the the one that I was most excited about was the first one just because it was like, yeah, I love to hunt. That is my off time. I have to cut it short because golf season comes back in. But once I get into the first event, it's like, all right, hell yeah, you know, I'm ready to go. Like this, I love this. You know, I everybody gets the wrong impression of me. Like I, I don't care about golf. Um, I love hunting more. You could probably flip a coin on that. And, uh, <laughs> but I, I love them both. And, um, but when, when the season, when the golf season comes, it's, it's all golf, like hunting season's over with for me. And I'm, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Go back to that. You said like some people get the wrong idea. They think I don't love golf. I love hunting more. Was golf always like your dream from a young kid or was it something you're just like, Wow, I'm beating everybody. I'm really good at this. Let me see how far this goes. Kind of both of what you just said. Um, you know, I growing up playing and everything, I I didn't know what I wanted to do. I and then when I got to college, I was like, or I, when I got to like middle school, high school, I was like, okay, like I'm kind of steadily getting better and better, and then started getting recruited. Okay. Well, yeah, I want to go to college for this. And I get to college and had a, you know, a decent college career. And then I was like, yeah, I, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. You know, it's maybe this could go my way. Yes, and it is going your way. But going back to high school, I mean, you got a glimpse of Scotty Scheffler before the rest of the world did. You had to play <laughs> against him in high school where he won three state championships against you. What was your first impression when you saw Scotty Scheffler tee it up? Well, I mean – me and, me and Sky, we've been playing, like, the same tournament since – it was before high school. Like, everybody knew Scotty. Like, <laughs> even – I mean, we, this was like – we were like 12, 13, you know. He, he was winning everything. 
I mean, you, you, if you're going to a tournament and Scotty's in it, well, you're playing for second. It's kind of like how it is nowadays, you know, on the PJ <laughs> tour. Right. Um, and you know, it's, it, it was good because he was very highly ranked in, in the nation at the time too. So it was just like, okay, like if I can somewhat compete with this guy, I may, you know, have a really good chance of playing well in college and, you know, maybe doing this after college and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, Scotty's, Scotty's been what he is now since like 13, like for me, you know, from my point of view, I really thought that he was going to be like the next George Spieth, go to college for a year or two and he was gone. But I, I think he ended up staying for four and ended up graduating. But yeah. He had some injuries he had to deal with down there at Texas, but obviously he's going now. But I thought it was very cool when when you won in the Bahamas, he was out at the American Express in Palm Springs, and they asked him about you, and he said, I've always thought that kid just had so much talent. So obviously yeah. he thinks very highly of your game as well. Yeah, for sure. I actually saw him yesterday. We had a, we have a mutual um, sponsor, a bank sponsor, and uh, we did a little outing and together, and it was good to see him. I had – well, I hadn't seen him in probably since I graduated college, you know. I mean, he went on and went through the Corn Ferry before I even got on Corn Ferry and got his PJ Tour card and just hadn't seen him. So it was good to see him and catch up with him yesterday. You can shout out your, your bank sponsor, Veritex Bank, Malcolm Holland. We yeah. love them. Shout out to Veritex. Absolutely. The yeah, best they're great. Bank they're they're awesome. <laughs> if you ask me. Uh, who are some of the other like uh, you and Scotty go way back, but who are some of your boys that are on tour right now that you're looking forward to? Like, nice, I get to see them, you know, every week more or less, hang out, catch up. Yeah, um, Colin, Colin Morcow. Um, you know, me and him, um, we play on a Palmer Cup together. Um, Davis Riley, Nick Hardy, um, Sam Burns. Uh, Hell, I mean, the whole tour. There's, there, there's so many out there now that it's it's hard to like keep up with like who all is out there that you know I was really good buddies with in college. I mean, it's, it's so that I, I will tell you like um, the the guys that have you know kept in touch and you know text me when I like play well and stuff. You know, they don't have to do that, but like Colin. Colin texts me after I won and Justin saw and, you know, keep in touch with Davis Riley and, you know, all those guys that, you know, kept in touch and, you know, showed their support of letting me know that they're like keeping an eye on who's coming up and everything like that. That was, it was, it was really cool throughout that's, the year. That's, that's real one thing cool. I think that's cool about the golf world for the most part. It's like, I mean, listen, you all want to beat each other's heads in every week, right. but you're still, you're supportive of each other and you're, you're there for each other because it's, it's a lonely game out there, but you want to see your buddies do well, just like you want right. to do well. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I, I hope I win, you know, and I wish I could win every tournament, but I don't, you know, that I may never win another, another golf tournament, but um, I know some of my friends are going to, and to, to be able to be there while they, if they do win, that's going to be awesome, you know, just be able to there and be there and cheer them on. And I mean, I, I got way too much respect for the game and uh, everybody that's playing it that, I mean, I ain't, God, I hope he doesn't win or, you know, <laughs> something like that, you know. That's cool, man. But, yeah. And it's just so hard. Everybody that's made oh. it there knows what you have to go through to get there. And it's like, there's a respect. Even if you don't like a guy, you're like, he made it out or he wins or something like, damn, it's hard to do. I've, I've been right. trying to do it too, you know? So there's like, that's always there. I want to get into your golf game a little bit, Chandler, because I think it's fair to say you're an old school type of dude. Not a lot of bells and whistles needed around. Is your approach to your golf game the same when it comes to like the use of the technology that's out there right now? Track, man, video, analytics. Do you use any of that stuff? Uh, nothing against it. Like, I think it's all great technology, but I don't, I don't use it. Yeah, it's just I've always been kind of a field player. Um, the only time I've really used it is, you know, like 
wedges and stuff like that. But like when it, I don't, I don't sit on the range a lot. My practice is a lot of like playing. The only thing that I'll sit around and like practice for hours and hours is, you know, chipping and putting. Cause I feel like that is where for me, um, that's where I score because I, I'm not a long guy. Like I, maybe like 285, 290, pretty average, you know, on the PJ tour. Uh, so if, if I can get my, if I practice my chipping and putting to where I, you know, feel comfortable where it's as good as it can get for, you know, me, um, I feel like I can go hit, you know, nine, 10, uh, greens around and still post a number, you know, that that's, but if I, you know, if I stripe it, then I feel like I can really go low. What about instruction? Like, do you take lessons? You work with somebody? Man, I I used to work with a uh, a guy back home. He he actually got out of the uh, the golf industry. Uh, his name was Dean Cho. I worked with him. I don't know. It was a long time. Like, I mean probably seven, eight years. And we worked so much. I've always had one tendency and it was to get underneath, you know, the club gets stuck behind me and everything like that. I've never had the problem of the club, like getting over the top or anything like that. And, uh, me and me and him worked so much and he gave me stuff to keep an eye on when we were working together that now if, if things start getting a little off, I kind of already know what it is and I already have something that I can work towards uh, getting it back to where I need it to be. And it seems to, you know, s- keep me on track, you know, if I ever do get off track. I love it. It's nice. I mean, this is yeah. so old school. It's so cool to hear. I think the people at home would be fascinated to hear about your driver too, because you hear all these tour players talking about, you know, these special shafts tip two inches here three extra grips under the right hand and all this, but tell us about your driver. Cause it's not quite like that. Yeah. I, well, it'd be, it'd be it'd still be fascinating if I was still playing it, oh. but I, I, it's actually out of the bag now. You've already I, changed. Oh God. Here yeah. he goes. He's going Hollywood already. Change the no, driver. No, no, it, it, I, I think it was more of, I was playing so much. I, I, I've never played so many tournaments during a year than I did this last year. And I think it was just me, you know, slowly getting a little bit stronger. And I just kind of like, I think outgrew it just a little bit, but yeah, that shaft. No, I actually played it for like two and a half years though. So it was, uh, so the ping stock shaft, 55 gram stiff, not tipped, (laughs) no extra wraps on the grip, no nothing. I mean, you could literally get it off the rack and, I, it's a funny story. I, the way I found it, um, you know, I still live here in College Station. I was on the range one day at the facility, um, and one of my buddies was dating a girl on the girls' golf team. And uh, we're out there, you know, late one evening, right before dark. We're just hitting balls and kind of jacking around, and she had her bag out there. And I was just like, okay, you know, I just grabbed her driver, teed up one. And I hit it. I hit it. I'm like, there ain't no way in hell. That's that's a fluke right there. there there's no way that should have happened. I teed up like five more just on a string. Piss missiles just gone. <laughs> I was like, okay. like There's something about this. I don't know what it is. It ain't going to make sense to the ping guy, but I got to call him tomorrow. So I actually called – and, and luckily enough, the uh, college ping rep, Jeff Brown, um, he actually moved to College Station right at this time. So I called him up and I was like, hey, hear me out. This isn't going to make any sense to you. It didn't make any sense to me, but I got to try it out. I told him, he was like, all right, I'll, you know, I'll meet you at the golf course tomorrow. I'll bring some other shafts and we'll, we'll try it out. He sets up the track man. He has me hit like six or seven different shafts before that one that the girl had in her shaft uh, and her driver. And, you know, two of them were, you know, solid or, you know, they probably could have worked. And um, 
then he was like, all right, here you go. Here's the shaft that you were talking about. I put it in, hit one drive. He looks at me. He was like, hell, just keep it. Yeah, I don't, he was like, I don't get it either, but that something the way you're releasing the club or something, that's it. Because the, and the ball speed went up as soon as I put that ball and that shaft in, the ball speed went up like four miles an hour. Oh my and God. It was, and it was straighter. So I was like, So what are we playing what? now? Yeah. Why'd you leave her? Uh, uh, Blue Ventus. Okay. 60 gram uh, X. <laughs> Now you're just a normal guy. Yeah. God, yeah. Man, I was so yeah. excited about that driver. Speaking of College Station, you still live there. Some great golf courses in that area, but one apparently has your number. The boys over at Conroe Country Club seem to get the best of you. <laughs> Shout out, D-Staff. I know, yeah. Knew where that <laughs> came from. Yeah. No, <clears throat> there's a – it is probably the best nine-hole golf course you will ever play in your life. And uh, they have – some serious money games out there. <laughs> and uh, after this last time, I told him, I was like, all right, it's going to be a while before I come back to y'all. You know, it's, we played a three on three on three. It, this is the ma- most laid back golf course you'll ever be to and be at. Also, we played a six on, didn't see anybody, didn't hold anybody up. Uh, three versus three, you know, kind of like an ABC player or whatever. And uh, so three-man teams, my team, I was the lowest amount lost. And I lost. And, you know, when I go when I go to Conroe, I, I usually bring, you know, 1,000, 2,000 with me just, just to be safe. I didn't have enough. And you lost and you the lost least the- amount on your team. I was the least amount, and oh. I lost seventy nine hundred. Oh, oh shit! They played them for country real. boys. How did you Conroe? lose less than the rest of your team? Were they have like indies or something? They had extra bets. Uh, one of my buddies, I watched him lose thirty grand. Oh, okay. Conroe, yeah. that hurt. They, they, people weren't. Jo- I've heard about this Conroe from numerous people, and I didn't know it was like that. Yeah. Thirty grand. No, it, it it okay. Don't get me wrong. It got out of hand. Yeah. But <laughs> mm-hmm. It uh. But it, you know, it, it's always a fun game. Uh, you hate to lose that much and everything, but the guys that we usually play with, they ain't worried about it. That's, that that yeah. the, the the guy that lost thirty grand that was like thirty bucks to him. Okay, like, love yeah. that. He, what what was, was the three man the three on three game? What were y'all playing? Was it like two best balls against their two, or do you have some crazy exotic game you play? No, I, yeah, I think it was two best ball. Um, hammers uh and you could press it anytime anytime mm. hammers anytime and i think we played i think we played 27 holes maybe 36 something like that that so. hammer can get aggressive sleep yeah. you should go spend and, the winter and, down in and the hammers <laughs> the, the hammer started out at 50s so yeah it can get going yeah, pretty yeah, good yeah you roll one by a few feet have one to win now you got one to not lose hammer it's no yeah. no it's wonder d steph's pockets are so flush all the time he's just down there yeah. making a living in conroe he ain't having to work yeah. too damn hard he should have done yeah. that in college. do you like is that like your style of practice i know you shut it down you're not a huge practicer and you said i don't i don't hit balls on the range all that much is that what you like to do when you do when you are working on your game you like to get in money games and play versus uh, working on yeah, your swing yeah i mean we we you know the guys that I play with here in College Station. You know we'll 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 play for a little bit of money. Nothing like that. You yeah. know, it'll be you know we'll play like five a hole birdies doubles or something like that. It's no hammers or anything like that. Um, but yeah, no my my practice is just playing, betting, not betting. It doesn't matter to me. I just it's just on the course. What's the chances of you playing a tournament and having a flat lie every time and a perfect lie. You know, I, I like, I like going on the course, you know, play it down, play it up, you know, do whatever. And just being able to hit at a pin that's three from the right when there's junk on the right, you know, I mean, it's just being able to work the ball into some pins and stuff like that. You can hit it. On, I feel like me, I can hit it on the range all day, but, just doesn't. I don't get the practice that I want out of it. 
I love that. If you're if you're a good player, in my opinion, like you would want to range with uneven lies. So you could work right. on downhill, uphill, side hill, because you're right. You don't get flat lies pretty much ever when you're playing tournament right. golf. That's very well said. Uh, who's on the bag for you? Have you had a steady guy for the last couple of years? Yeah, this well, since this year was the the first year that I've had full status, uh, this was the first time I've had like a consistent guy. And it's a buddy of mine that I grew up with. Uh, I say grew up with. He he actually grew up in Beaumont, and we played high school golf together against each other, same district, same regionals. He ended up going to Baylor. Uh, we graduated the same year. His name's uh, Braden Bailey. And uh, he was actually only supposed to caddy for me for the first four events this last year because those are the hardest ones for people to get to. And um, I was just – and after those first four events, there's like I think seven weeks off or something like that. I was like, hey, you mind coming and caddy for me for these first four events, and then, you know, I'll I'll have time to find somebody after that. He was like, yeah, for sure. Well, I go and win the first event, get 12th in the next one, and I end up missing the next two cuts. But after those first two weeks, he was like, Hey, uh, <laughs> what do you think about me riding this out with you? I'm like, Hey man, you can ride it out as long as you want. Just if you, because he still plays, he's, he's awesome. He's, he's a great golfer. He could play with anybody at any time. And I, I told him, uh, I was like, look, I know you, I know you still want to play. If you, uh, if you decide that you want to, you know, not quit, but like you want to start playing again just let me know give me like two or three weeks in advance just so i can you know find somebody he's like yeah that's fine so he actually stuck it out all year with me and now he's going to q school and going uh he just played first stage got through there and so now he's i think he's going to be playing second stage this week no this well, week. damn Did you, you have yeah. a contingency plan in case he slides through yeah i got another guy he he actually so Braden's. Uh, Braden had to take two weeks off, uh, kind of at the end of this year, uh, his sister was getting engaged and, you know, they had to go, go do that and, you know, take the next week to celebrate or whatever. And, uh, I got another buddy, Tate Fleming. He, uh, he played college golf at Dallas Baptist. He's from Houston. Same thing, kind of grew up playing against each other. And, uh, he came and caddy for me for those two weeks and, uh, it was, it was great. You know, I, I don't I don't want like a professional caddy uh on my bag just because I don't wanna have to end up getting to know the guy or anything like that. I like having a buddy on the bag because I'm really laid back on the golf course. I don't need a lot of numbers. Just give me the yardage to the pin. I'll go from there. You know, I can figure it out. I know where the wind's gonna be. I know every, you know, I know, I'm not saying I know everything, but I know what I need to know. I don't need a lot of numbers or anything. Um, so having a buddy on the bag that I can BS with down the fairway, have good times, you know, talk about anything. Uh, that's kind of the way I, I want it to be. Wow. That's incredible. I like that. That's There's always that like getting to know you period, you know, where you, if you get a new guy and it's like, you, you don't say the same things you would say to your buddy and maybe they don't say the same yeah. things to you. And it's always like awkward. I always felt that same way. I was like, I'd rather just have one of my boys that can say what he thinks and he doesn't have to try too hard or show how valuable he is or any of that stuff. Exactly. Too, so. exactly. I, and then, I mean, to tell you the truth, I hope I, I mean, this year I'm really going to have to, pay attention to where the mic is because the conversations that we have, you know, I mean, it's just some of the things that we talk about, it's just how we go, you know, and um, it's, it's, it's really good to, you know, be able to do that. And it's not just like, well, Hey, how's your family, you know, or not, not that sounded wrong, but, <laughs> but, uh, but like, like my buddies, like I know how their family's doing and everything mm -hmm. like that. We're, like we can talk about anything other than golf. Oh, it's a, it's you a, be yourself. It's a great point. I mean, I remember when Matt Wolf turned pro, you know, they thought he needed a, a veteran caddy and they brought over JP Fitzgerald that caddied for Roy McIlroy for 
all those years. And he's like, we had nothing to talk about. <laughs> like he was right. an older guy. I'm a younger guy. We have nothing in common. And it didn't work right. out. So, I mean, you got to be comfortable out there and don't worry about where the mic is. Just be yourself. People will love <laughs> let that it stuff. Yeah. They'll let you know how much you owe. Um, before we get yeah. to the E9, <laughs> I got to ask, because you mentioned duck hunting season is about to start. Give me a quick preview of like what first week of duck hunting season, because I know that starts early in the morning. Yeah, no, it, you know, we'll, uh, it'll be get up at three, maybe two thirty, <laughs> and, uh, you'll yep, be yep. up till, you know, nine o'clock at night. And it's every day. Just in the it's, blind, freezing your balls off, getting ready to shoot some ducks. Yeah. I mean, we'll hunt, you know, we'll hunt from, you know, shooting time till, however long it takes. I mean, we'll probably, we probably won't hunt after probably 10 o'clock and then we'll, you know, everybody, I, like I said I, earlier, I got a good group of guys that I go with is between four to six of us every weekend that can go. And, um, we kind of all drive to where we're going. And then when we get done hunting, we figure out like, all right, where y'all going? Because we, we, we hunt like all like public land and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, after we get done hunting, we go scout, you know, all right, Hey, I'm gonna go North or I'm gonna go East. You know, I'm gonna go look at all this stuff and we'll go our separate ways and we'll keep in touch during the day. And then whoever finds the best spot, that's where we're going. Our weekends are a little different this time uh, of year. Getting up at three. <laughs> yeah, similar. Freezing my nuts off for a while. You just went on a, on a goose hunting trip, right? What, tell us about the art of hunting a goose and how it's different than the art of hunting a duck. Yeah, no, I, um, uh, I, I actually did a podcast, uh, with these guys. Uh, it was called Big Honker Podcast. And it's, uh, Andy Schaefer and Jeff Stanfield with Stanfield out, uh, Stanfield Outfitters over in Knox City, uh, Texas. You know, I did a podcast with them there. If you've never heard it, you've never watched it. It's, <laughs> it's pretty funny. And, um, they they told me like, hey man, you need you need to come up and hunt. I'm like, you just tell me when I'm there. You know, I, I finish I finish golf the first week of October. Uh, you just tell me when I'm there. And they're like, all right, come come open a weekend. Say no more, I'm there. So I went and it was it was a blast. You know, it's it's I had never been on a goose hunt like this. Uh, you know, duck hunting with my buddies. You know, we, the biggest group of ducks will have like come in as maybe, you know, 20 or 30. And, uh, we had, we had a group of about 2000 geese Whoa. come in and just do it perfect. And Out it was, time. yeah. And we, the bad thing is, the bad thing is, is that, uh, when that group came in, you know, we, we had like, I think there was 11 guys shooting and uh, we only needed like six or seven more. And Andy, you know, the guy, he's, he's in the blind with us. And he was like, we are not shooting. We are not shooting. Just pass that down the line because we will shoot too many. <laughs> so we had to just, you know, watch them and just wait for a smaller group to come in. Wow. Damn. Yeah. Too many geese. Just point up at the sky. Yeah, it, with that many, yeah, yeah pretty Getting much. Some That's where I come in, right there. Mm -hmm. I get one, just bang. I get one, just that bang. Yeah, there's a big, yeah, whole flock. Um, yeah, and we, and it was pretty cool too. We, uh, I mean, I don't know if many people know, but they they actually banned birds, like put a um, a metal ring around their ankle. They they'll like trap them or whatever. And they do it kind of like all over the country and Canada and stuff like that. And we actually shot one and uh, they called it in and the band had been birded. Uh, the bird had been banded in Alaska in 2020. Oh, Damn. God. You got to yeah. be tired as hell. That's a long night. Yeah. How are you supposed to know you're shooting a banded bird when you're shooting? You don't. It? You have no idea. Huh. That, I mean, that that's the cool that's the cool thing about it and for for them like banding birds is kind of obviously for you know biologists and stuff like that uh to see like their pattern and where they migrate to and stuff like that and you just kind of like 
it has a number or a website that you can call it in or send it into and they'll they'll send you a whole certificate on like how old the bird is when it was banded where it was banded and then where you shot it yeah i don't think you get in trouble oh i was gonna say yeah. I no 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 like no yeah you don't okay. you don't get in trouble at all no all right, no, just track it. One last question before we go to the E9. Do you have a nickname yet? Because everyone needs a nickname, and there's obviously one that I think is going to stick if you don't have one. No, I ain't got one yet. Okay, well, we, we, yeah, you're yeah. on Gravy in the Sleaze on our Sirius XM show a few weeks ago, and obviously Tombstone's your favorite movie, and you got the stash. I mean, it's just obvious it's Doc, and I think Doc needs to stay. I, I'm good with it. All right. Only I'm, one of the greatest characters in the history huh. of modern cinema. I think you'll be all right with I, it. That... That him him playing that character in that movie, I don't think for me, I don't think I've seen a better uh, act. You know, right. I mean, it was unbelievable. Well, it's settled, Val. When you, when you see him out there leading PGA Tour events, I need you to start yelling "Doc," not Chandler. You got to learn how to spin the coffee cup or whatever it was too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, do that. You got that. All, All right, right, Doc. We're gonna get to the E nine here, Doc. This is we get to have some fun with you here. We asked this to everyone. I think we should go celebrity crush. Yeah, go celebrity. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Celebrity crush. <laughs> Coming with you to Hawaii. Uh, oh, Margot Margot Robbie. Oh yeah, yeah. she's damn. Kind is of that a the popular second? pick? <laughs> I think we've only asked that like four people. She might have been two of them now. Yeah, uh, yeah. her her and Wolf of Wall Street was. Yeah, yeah that's also one better. of the greatest performances in modern cinema. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For my money. All right, yeah. good selection. You got some competition, but I think you could pull it off. All right, my next one. Um, like I said earlier, you're not a big bells and whistles type of a dude, right? I don't think you're going to go blow your cash on watches and cars, but you win a big check out there in Hawaii. What's one toy you want to treat yourself to? I, I, I don't know. My dad, he uh, he ruined me. You know, he, he always made made me feel like we had zero money and it rubbed off on me. So I, I don't spend any money. I honestly, I, I don't even know, you know, honestly, it'll probably be land. Like, it'll, it, so I can, you know, build my own place and, uh, have my own like ducklies, honestly. <laughs> that's beautiful. That's a great. Perfect. Yeah. That's, that's a yeah. toy. Yeah. That counts. All right. Yeah. S staying on that, you get your first PGA tour win. Trophy's one of those big ones. You can fill it up. What are we putting inside? Probably Ultra. Mick Ultra. There it is. Okay. Get you a sponsor. Carb conscious. If you carb, want to get I a little aggressive. Doc didn't strike me as a carb conscious type. This Sincoro <laughs> tequila behind you is rather nice if you want to get a little aggressive. Might black out pretty soon after, <laughs> if I put that in a jug. <laughs> hey, you're a PGA Tour winner. Yeah, it's you got okay. a big trophy. It don't I, matter. I, I I had my I had my fun of blacking out in college, so I I, I don't do that many many times nowadays. Uh, all right, this is going to be a fun one for us because oh, we all went to college in Texas, okay? Mm -hmm. And from the Texas A and M perspective, give me the stereotype of people, not golfers, just people who went to TCU and SMU. Okay. Go. <laughs> no, hold on. What? Like, what's the stereotype? The A and M students have of students at TCU and at SMU if you had to I never really heard anything no, honestly we're perfect. All right. yeah, we're perfect. I knew it just no, no I, I honestly the being at A&M everybody just talked trash about Texas but I I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now I'm the least aggy you've ever met in your life I didn't get in the whole chance oh um I didn't get in the whole cult thing. No, I I went there. I went. I played golf. I partied. I went to school, and that was it. <laughs> Did you go to the football games? No, really. Because they would just, all they would do is piss me off because they suck. Okay. Well, that might I might have one question that is now irrelevant, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Okay. Okay. Keep it going. Uh, next one. Texas A&M has put out some good golfers as of late, and you lived with two of them at one point, Cameron Champ and Sam Bennett. Who's the better roommate? Ooh. I should say who's the shittier roommate. Yeah, well, I think we could use the process of elimination. Yeah. <laughs> better roommate. Uh, in college was probably, probably Sam. 
because he was down to do anything. Cam Cam was Cam was the old man. He he never never wanted to do anything. We, were, you know, it was college. We, we want to go have some fun. Well, yeah, what are you supposed to do on a Friday night? Cam wanted to stay inside. Sam was, hell, where are we going? Sam you was know? ready for the cold beer. Yeah, yeah. get the cold beer now. Yeah, get, slide that in. Gotta Good get the cold beer. Yeah, you and Sam strike me as more like similar. Yeah, y'all honestly. In a good way. I mean, you're both great players, but it's you are both like very old school, very natural yeah. swings. Everything like just doesn't look technical. It's it's nice to see yeah. out of the young guys. And we we grew up 20 minutes from each other. There you go. Uh, yeah, got some talent. Got some talent <laughs> in that state. Uh, all right, here's a real golf one. Okay, other than yourself, give me the Corn Ferry Tour graduate. You expect to have the biggest rookie season on the PJ Tour? Um. Jake Knapp. Jake Knapp. I've heard mm. that. Heard he, How come? Game. How come? He played, uh, I think he played 22 events this year. He made 21 cuts. That's hard. Steady Eddie. I like That's that. That's hard out there. He, uh, and he hits it a country mile. That and helps. It, yeah. It and, helps. and it's straight. <laughs> that also helps. In those cuts yeah. out there, man, like you can have just a little bit of a cold week with the putter and shoot five under and miss the cut. I mean, those cuts are five, six, and seven under par. Yeah, I mean, I this year I didn't – when I played good, I played good. But the weeks that I didn't make the cut, I missed the cut by like one just because I wasn't making a, a putter hit uh, – a putt here or there. Yeah. And, I mean, this year I think I made – 10 cuts, 11 cuts. It that was that didn't sit well with me. I mean, I don't get me wrong, I'm very happy to be going to the PJ Tour, but that is one thing I'm I'm honestly going to work towards this year is making more cuts. I can tell you one thing. You make 10 cuts every year the rest of your PJ Tour career, but throw in a win each time, you'll be more than happy. <laughs> I'll be okay. <laughs> one win that. a year, we're just yeah, fine. you get more time off and more yeah. money. It's a hell of a yeah. deal. All right, next one. Um, what was your favorite meal in Japan when you played the Toyota Junior World Cup? <laughs> uh, well, it was every night. I went to Outback, got a got a steak and uh, baked potato, and yeah, that that was every night. Didn't you have to walk was, like a mile each night? Every night. Every night. Every night. To, did you even begin to try any of the food over there? You're just like, no, nah, that's really not my thing. Hell no. I that <laughs> that kidding. was that at that time back then, and pro, I ain't gonna say I would have tried it now, but back then I was really picky, and uh, I hell I just went walking one night, and I was like, I gotta find, there's there's got to be something, you know, got to be something, <laughs> and I went down and. I saw an Outback sign, and I was like, holy shit, yes. Like, yes. <laughs> thank God. Are you just, like, plain, like, you just meat and potatoes and stuff like that? or If I had that for the rest of my life, don't don't ever worry about me. I'll be just fine. Beautiful. Uh, that's beautiful. Go to Japan, hit Outback yep. every single Outback. night. Walk to it, too. Walk to it. And Yeah, and I'm going to tell you right now, that was probably one of some of the best steaks I've ever had in my life. Like, I don't know what they – the difference is over there, but they were perfect every time. And it was, it was honestly different, but it was nice. Love it. They might have Wagyu at the Japanese Outbacks. Kobe. That's where they come from. Yeah, Kobe. Oh, Kobe beef over yeah. at the Outback. Yeah, yeah. that's why it's <laughs> better. Uh, all right. You haven't been to a football game, so this might not be relevant to you. But if you could, in your own words, explain – what the hell the yell leaders are at a and m and why should we not hate them if you I'm can right i'm right there with you <laughs> I, w I wish we had cheerleaders <laughs> yeah because <laughs> uh everybody just talk and talks about it like why what the hell is a yell leader like what what are they doing you know and i don't know man it's it's just different. I think it's just like a, a culture thing that they've always done. Uh, it started way back when, and they just never got rid of it. But I, like I said, I'm about the 
the least Aggie there's ever been. I've never ain't doing the whole chant thing. No, nah, <laughs> y'all got some ain't. stuff. You got you some don't, stuff that you do at that school. You don't. It's boo. a little different. You don't boo either. You like yeah. s or something like that. I, yeah. So I, I was know. doing a little research because I was going to ask this question. I was like, I don't think I've ever asked anybody like the real, what are they? Why are they there? And I watched a video on YouTube about them from the guys that are the current Yale leaders giving instructions on how to do it. And I was like, I, it's, it was honestly, I couldn't get through it. I was like, I got to, <laughs> I, I was like, uh, -uh I can't do it anymore. And then there's a dude sign like, it's like a, it's an honor or a privilege or whatever like, to be one of those guys, I guess, if you're the right yeah. guy. To some people. Yeah. If you're the type of guy that's yeah. honored by that. Y'all can have it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> All, right. All right. Fair enough. Last one. You got to be honest with us here. Who did their own homework at Texas A&M more, you or Johnny Manziel? Oh. <laughs> Probably watched the same amount of tape. <laughs> uh, it's a close one, probably, huh? I don't know because I didn't do much. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you had a little helper. <laughs> there you go. The tie. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, uh, <laughs> we'll just count uh, it a tie. We don't need any sanctions brought on AM as a no, result of this podcast. No, That's beautiful. That, that, I love it. Well, Chad, you got I, through. I, I went there. I went there. I, I went to class when I had to go to class. I went and played golf and I went and had fun. I mean, That's mission that's accomplished. Battle. And now look yeah. at you. Headed to the now PGA Tour in 2024. Yeah. Doc Chandler Phillips, thank you so much, man. That was a lot of fun. Yes, sir. All right, that was the Doc Chandler Phillips joining us on Subpar. I love this kid. He is just old school. He's got a lot of game, but when it's time for the offseason, that's exactly what it is. It's an offseason. We're putting the clubs in the closet. We're going hunting. Most guys that get the PJ Tour card for the first time, they got a little break. They're like, let's work on it. track, man. Let's tighten everything up. Let's get perfect for the season. He's like, no, dude, I just put him down. You don't play for a couple months. And then when time comes to get ready, he gets ready. I mean, he did it last year on the Corn Ferry Tour. He didn't play for like two months leading into that. Picked up his clubs right before that event. Boom, won. That's a big reason he's on the PJ Tour this year. It's just in a world where there's everyone seems to travel with like an entourage, you got your fitness guy, you got your mental guy, you got your stats guy, and everything's like a business, and it's so many voices, so many chefs in the kitchen, like he just does it the old school way, and it's honestly refreshing, doesn't use any of that, not saying it's wrong if you do, but it's kind of nice to hear a dude that does it um, completely different, and dude, I mean, look, at he's young, he's already out, he's already out there, it works. He's that driver straight off the rack yeah. for a long time. He's a beauty. I can't wait for him to get to the PGA Tour. Well, he's just he's just he's a good old boy going to Outback over in Japan. Um, do need to get to the bottom of who did more of their own homework, him or Johnny Manziel at Texas A&M. Texas A&M been a little bit in the news. Maybe we lay low on that one for a little bit, but a lot of fun sitting down with him. We wish him the best of luck in 2024. Also. We just filmed a very special episode that's going to be coming out later this year with John Rahm yeah. and Phoenix Children's Hospital. It's going to be out later this year, but r their golf tournament is actually this Friday, which raises all the money for the hospital. And if you want to go out and donate right now, you can. You can go to give to pch.org slash golf. That's G-I-V-E. T-O-P-C-H dot org slash golf. Donate to this incredible charity. Just want to get it out there before the tournament starts. Anything you can do to help, it's great. Hospital costs $2.7 million a day to run, and they have over 40 locations. They do an unbelievable job for all the children here in the Phoenix and all of Arizona, but a great cause, and we're happy to help out with it. Yeah, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better cause than this. We had some of the, you know, there were patients there, there were donors there at this event, and just for John Rahm, who gets pulled in so many different directions, for him to get behind this, it, it, it gives a lot of notoriety to the cause. But, yeah, give to pch.org, Phoenix Children's Hospital. They do a spectacular job. They're going to have a great event this week, but – if you want to get involved, head to that link right there yeah. and um, and do it. They would be very appreciative of anything. And we're all about giving, whether it's to charities, to bookies, whatever. I'm giving. We ain't scared to I'm give. I'm giving right now, dog. <laughs> all right. A major well, let's way. get to some picks. Let's make some money this week. All right. We got the last yeah. event, the last official event of the PGA Tour season for 2023. Heading to Sea Island for the RSM Classic. We didn't do the best in golf last week. My football pick hit. I didn't hit. do great in football either, bud. My football pick hit. Michigan, thank you very much. Um, but let's get to some golf. Okay. I'm going to go with Russell Henley this week at the RSM classic 20 to one heard from a little birdie, which could be true. Might not be true. Not. We listened to anybody. Re just shot 59 
a couple days ago over at Columbus Country Club. So obviously the game's in pretty good form. I'm going to ride that in to the RSM Classic and give me Russell Henley, the Georgia Bulldog. Go dogs! I do like guys that shoot 59 leading to event. Leads me to believe game's in a good spot. So <laughs> smart, smart by you. That There's so many local guys you can pick here, and that's where I'm going with my dark horse. But near the top... We're waiting on this guy. We've been talking about he's going to win. He is going to win. He's going to win a bunch. So if I just keep picking him over and over, I can point back and be like, see, told you, called it. He's going at 18 to 1. Give me Cam Young. He played in Cabo a few weeks ago. Didn't have his best stuff where they just lit that place up. I'm chalking that up to just, hey, let me get an event, go down to Cabo, have a nice week, knock the rust off. Maybe he's locked back, uh, locked back in a little bit more this week. But 18 to 1, Cam Young beat me. All right. We'll see what happens. He I don't think his... he shot 59 recently, or I haven't heard about it. He didn't. Um, Dark Horse, you mentioned a lot of locals there, a lot of PGA Tour players. I'm going to go with a local. Coming off a runner-up finish down in Cabo. He knows the place as well as anyone. He's going off at 50 to 1. Like I said, he gets to sleep in his own bed. The golf course is not long by any means. It just depends on what the weather's like. Give me Matt Kuchar. Cooch Lash playing some damn good golf. Almost ran away and hid. At Cabo, if it wasn't for that ending on Saturday. Ugh, uh, quad. But did, no, no quads this week, please, Cooch. Did lead to maybe the best story on the PGA Tour this year with Eric Van Royen, but I'm going in a similar vein. I'm going 50-1, to 1, and I'm going with a local, and I'm going. it was between Harris English and this man. I thought for but I'm sure going you're going Harris. Cashmere, Keith, uh, I think the par three event down in Austin got him really dialed in on those short irons, which he'll have a lot of this week. There's no better way to prep than that. Give me Cashmeezy. You know, we were just talking about Kashmir. Give me him this week. Why not? Right. Why not? Okay, I like it. And as always, we give you a football pick here on Subpar because that's what we really know. Mm -hmm. And this team, it's personal for them. They are pissed off. Their coach is suspended. Got suspended in the air heading to Penn State. Just absolutely rude of them to do that. But they played with a lot of emotion last week. They got the cover for me against Penn State. So I'm going to ride them again. They're big favorites. But like I said, I think they are on a mission to make to just shove it to the NCAA. They're 19 and a half points favorites against Scott Van Pelt's Maryland Turpins. So give me the Michigan Wolverines. Massive Ooh, favorites. Massive favorites. You love the massive favorites. No pitchy favorites. pitchy woo woo. You love the massive favorites. I'm coming off a hot week. I had Oklahoma State Cowboys after the big win in Bedlam. Just they missed. went down there, just shit the bed completely. <laughs> the game was over before it even started. I was 21 0. I was like, this is not going to win, man. Like I said, it's the year, it's the time of the year to give, and I gave a lot on that game. So I'm backing it up. This might feel like a homer pick, given who's in the building right now, but I'm going with a team that I think may be playing in the college football playoffs. The Washington Huskies are catching points at Oregon State, which is a weird place to play. Weird stuff happens at night at Oregon State, but they're catching one and a half. Coming off wins, USC, Utah. They're in a tough stretch of the schedule Oregon. right now, but they feel like they they just find ways to win even when they look bad. I'll take Huskies in the points all day. Big against, Penix against energy. Against the Beavs. Yeah, my man, Penix. Got to throw it out there. Penix. And speaking of that, you mentioned that special guest. We're getting ready to mm. film it because we got a Canadian hero in the building. Wonder if you can guess who that is. You'll find out on next week's Subpar.